Star Trek Early Voyages. This was a comic book series published by Marvel Comics starting in 1997. And it was when Paramount had a unique relationship with Marvel. So there was a flood of Star Trek comics going to Marvel at that time. And this series highlighted the era when Captain Pike was running the Starship Enterprise. So it gave us some background on the characters that we saw in the cage, and it also gave us some backstory about Captain Pike and his adventures before the cage, who these people were and how they were involved in their different roles on the ship. 17 issues it ran for. It ended in 1998. It was a very popular series, but unfortunately, they had to stop all the Star Trek comics. The Marvel license ran up for that. So the final issue ended up leaving on a hang... Uh, what's it called? Uh, cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Which was never resolved because, I mean, Marvel couldn't do any more stories. So they, it just ended abruptly. It was... Yeah, that, w that was really sad. I mean, if you were reading the comics back then and you're going, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. So we see the it was written by the series, only 17 issues, but it had consistency with the writing team. Dan Abnett, as well as Ian Edgington. Artists included Patrick Zercher, Mike Collins, Javier Puido, Greg Adams, and Steve Moncus. What did you think about the series overall? I love this series. It, this was actually good enough that it, you know, they can make novels out of it. And of course, episodes too. But I mean, but it was just... Um, so it, it had, so out of these 17 comics, they had different stories. I mean, you know, sometimes one story is continued into the next, but they all, but they had so many different stories going over these 17 different, different issues. And they also had, they introduced new characters. I mean, of course, we still have the characters we know, but they, but they introduced new characters as well. And they also did issues that, that focused on each new character. So we got some of their background and, they became very interesting, well-rounded characters. Yeah, when it, when it began the series, it highlighted the idea of we're going to understand the pilot episode better. And so within the first four issues, that tended to be the focus. Yes, we did get to see some Klingons early on, but the idea of which we noticed in the cage, that there were injuries that there was something that happened before Talos IV. And that's because there was a battle on Rigel Seven, And we know that this was one of the flashback scenes in the cage, and this comic series goes into that. They actually had a story telling what happened on Rigel Seven, So, it, I mean, it was great the way they developed that. They, they're on the planet, and they're, they're in a battle. And I believe they said Rigel Seven was... Um, a candidate for member membership into the Federation. And so there were, there were people on the planet that were for that. They still had a faction that was against it. And you, you see all this story development in there, and you find out how Spock got his injury. Oh, when you also see Pike in that castle, with, you know, with, with the uh, his illusion that was from the cage where he had that castle and Vina was in the long flowing dress. They actually have that scene in the comics with a different woman, but there actually was a blonde woman wearing the long flowing dress that Pike uh, was with. So initially, I know when I watched it when I was younger, what comes to mind is this is just a fairy tale from his mind. Well, the comics say, no, this was the scenery on the planet. This is how it was, which added weight to the episode even more. Also, we got to understand the relationship with Captain Pike and his previous yeoman. He had a, a male yeoman back back then on Rigel 7, uh, a man by the name of Dermot Cusack. And in, in so his character in this comic is like, he's never at a loss for words. He's very funny. He's very talkative. And some people find it annoying. But he, he was best friends with Pike. And Pike really depended on him as... as uh, as his yeoman and, and as his friend. So they, they were very close. Yeah, another interesting aspect of this Cage era in the comics was we were able to, because that previous yeoman died, it shows the struggles of Pike 
dealing with the loss, but also now having a new yeoman, Yeoman Colt. And there was an issue, issue number four, that shows the story of the cage through the eyes of Yeoman Colt and what it was like for her to be inside that cage, to see her captain. This is her first experience with her captain, what it was like to have trust in him, what it was like to deal with things on the planet which she had no control over. So it's fascinating to see that story from her eyes. I love that they did it that way because we already knew what happened in the cage when you know when reading this comic for the first time. So but now we're seeing it from someone else's point of view and hearing her thoughts about it and how she was new on the ship, she didn't real really feel like she was being accepted because she was a replacement for someone that that a lot of people loved and and someone that the captain was close to and and the captain even acted like he didn't like her at first. So so to see all this come out and see how she felt, uh, this was another uh, great part of her character development. What we saw in the cage was that it was just that she was very young and and they said she had had fantasies about the captain and all that, but they just made her like more of this um, dippy do woman, you mm-hmm. know. But we're seeing when you're, I mean, think about it, when you're new on a job, you're. You, you don't know what to do, not because you're incompetent, but because you don't want to overstep boundaries. You don't exactly know what your boundaries are. You're still getting to know people. So sometimes you might come across as goofy just by being green, not because you're incapable. Right, exactly. And she, and she proves herself later. Another thing that I found interesting about this series that it brings up right in the first issue, uh, and, and it does come up, is it shows the character flaws and it was brought out in the cage of Captain Pike not accepting having a woman on the bridge. It's It comes up a couple times in the comics. It shows that something that he's struggling with to a degree. And even in his verbiage, he would say things like, You're my trusted right-hand man. Uh, woman. Like, it's it's... Now that we look at that, it's so strange now. To have something like that in the future, but we could look at it as well. It's something that he had to work on. He had to adjust to. Well, well, in the episode, because there was that scene where he said something, and I don't know, Chris. Now I'm trying to remember what it was. But number one looked at him, and he yes, and he said something like for a woman, and she looked at him again, Mm -hmm. and then she just decided, oh, just drop it because he, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, obviously she she knows she's not going to change his mind. But it's because that show was a 60s show, and it kind of was as how they viewed women back then. But I mean, but this comic was written in the 90s, but they still wanted to, to – they threw that in based on what they had seen from the original series, mm-hmm. which was which was brilliant. I mean, they so they, they tried to, to base it on the characters that they had already seen on the show. So these writers showed their familiarity with Star Trek. Now, another thing, you know, when I was taking notes, when I was reading these comments, you know what the first thing in my notes was? Women were not supposed to have skirts back then, remember? That's right. In the very mm-hmm. first two pilots, the women wore pants and not skirts. Mm-hmm. But we saw the, was it that the nurse was, I believe, was the first woman in here in these comics that was wearing a skirt. So I'm just going to say maybe it was just optional for the women. They could wear the skirt or the pants, whichever they wanted. I think so. I think it's... Or could be transitioned. Do you remember in TNG, initially they had the men wearing scants? They did. So it could be, yeah, a transition or or, or still it could be or choice. They let people choose what they wanted to wear. I, I tend to lean towards choose what people wanted to wear because we both love the fan film. Star Trek continues, New Voyages, Phase 2. I mean, there's there's more than just those, but those ones really immerse you in the TOS experience. And we're seeing in some of them, they do have, women have pants. Uh, I think it's even, was a Star Trek Farragut? One of the Farragut films? I think one of the women there is wearing pants. It like might have Interchangeably. Been. Yeah, and, they, so, and that took place during the original series yes. period. So, so yeah, yeah I'll, give, I'll give it that. It's possible. Um, another thing about these stories, because they... They did so many things. They One of their two-part issues was finding a Vulcan colony. 
And the Vulcans were more like the ancient Vulcans. They were emotional and they were warriors. So we would think very similar to the Romulans. So that that was another great storyline they had here. And Spock's reaction to them, it actually making him wanting to be more logical and less emotional. And see, that is building on the character that we're getting out of Spock in the cage where he shouts and he smiles. So we see that internal conflict with Spock and now he's seeing others because it it mentioned in the comics, you're the first Vulcan in Starfleet. So I know that that's a non-canon issue, but we've been led to believe that for years when now Spock has others that he's able to see what happens that that is another thing about the cage with with number one she she was actually supposed to be the emotionless one mm-hmm. and 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 we saw Spock smile in the cage he had emotions there and then when they when they made the second pilot they decided you know since they had to drop the character number one they put her personality more into Spock so that was the the reason for that and and in some novels they have tried to say that that Spock made the decision to be more like number one. That's why he became uh, more emotionless. But even though we would think, no, it's because he was raised on Vulcan. And and some of that's true. So you just have to, you have to go with it. Well, he was, he was this way. He's, I think he still wanted to be logical in the cage, but he just, he just adopted it even more later on. Which makes sense. And what about all the other new characters? Like, okay, so they had the Klingon, K-A-A-J, I would say Kaj, and he was supposed to be, <laughs> <laughs> and he was supposed to be Pike's arch enemy. He was a you know he was a Klingon commander, and that was cool too that that they gave Pike an arch enemy in this. And he mm-hmm. he appeared in the early issues and then again in the later issues. So a, a a Klingon character that that he and Pike had had several run-ins. And then they had Enterprise officers, um, as I mentioned, the nurse, Gabrielle Carlotti. Uh, she was a human born on what they call New Milan. I like that a lot because now we are seeing an Italian crew member. Uh, they even went back when, when she visited Earth. She went back to Milan. It was a, a fresh perspective to have someone else on the on the crew that we weren't familiar with in the show. Yes, all of these new characters, um, and there was also Nano. He he was an alien. He he actually had a, a darker face and had a longer, thinner body. You could tell he was an alien, and he he was his species was called Liren, and they had episodes about him. He, and his his race, everyone was was bred to be to do a certain task in life, and his task was actually to be in Starfleet. Because once his people decided to join Starfleet, he, he was the first one born to uh, to be in Starfleet. Now, it's funny. Once we got to the point where it shows Nano's origin, I was it, was, it hit me that in some ways this comic series, Star Trek Early Voyages, almost has parallels to Star Trek Discovery. Because we read the issue where we're seeing the cage through Yeoman Colt's eyes. Well, in Star Trek Discovery, we're seeing the adventures of Discovery through Michael Berman's eyes. And with this character, Nano, with the unique social context of his planet, it's very much like Saru. He's, his people are bred to do something special. For, um, his, yes, spread yes, for a certain his, purpose. Yes, spread for a certain purpose. So it's like, hmm... <laughs> I'm seeing some you parallels can, here. You can kind of associate them. Yeah. Well, well, it, it you you have to think about it just because it has Pike, and now that Pike is on Discovery, yes. And but also it, it there is uh, the next generation episode, Masterpiece Society, where everybody was bred to have a certain job. Mm-hmm. That it's it's similar to that too. And this this comic might have been written at about the same time as that. It Possibly. was. Yes, it could have been. It was about that era. Um, and, and, and another great storyline they did in these comics was Yeoman Colt, uh, accidentally gets thrown into the future and it's an alternate timeline. And she meets Kirk and Kirk is this rogue, um, pilot. He pilots his own ship. He, he left, I don't, did he leave or get booted out of Starfleet because he didn't get along with, with Captain Pike? 
and you know the two of them had the had these differences of opinion and Kirk just didn't get along with Pike so he got out of Starfleet I mean all of that was a great storyline but it showed that that almost was was like the if you make one decision in life it could drastically change the timeline of things just like Captain Picard if he wasn't assertive he could have been a a science, a science officer yeah, who yeah. never became a captain Exactly. So this shows the alternate of what if Captain Kirk wasn't assertive of standing his ground and just left Starfleet? Well, Yeoman Colt gets to answer what happens with that through her time travel thing. So she, the, Yeoman Colt ends up being a very central character in this series. Yes, isn't it amazing? They must have just used her because she was the, the young, innocent one. And, and she also has a romance in these comics, too. Which which was wonderful. And what did I say? Just a lot of a lot of parallels to Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, this the series did end abruptly, and it's not like they didn't know because at the last page, it's like, guess what's going to happen? Well, you'll never know. This, yeah, they actually this, this, said yeah, that in the comic. That. You're like, what? What is this? But we love reading uh, anything Star Trek, and this was a fun ride rereading these comics to see how strongly they're interconnected to the original pilot episode. Thanks for listening. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our Facebook group. Live long and may the force be with you. Nanu Nanu.